and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some more mono green Tron. Uh, we call this deck Tron because we are, because uh, basically we have Karn the Great Creator and we're ramping and we have Karn in here. It's an ode to the um, the modern deck, which is mono green Tron that actually plays the the three Tron lands, Urza's Mine, Urza's Power Plant, and Urza's Tower to try to play Karn Liberated on the third turn of the game. Here we're playing Karn the Great Creator on the third, ter uh, third turn of the game. Just it's as impactful, um, but it's still pretty good. So we played this deck on Tuesday, which today is Saturday, so, you know, however many days ago that is. I don't know if anybody could actually do that math. I don't know if we can figure that out, but it was, it was, we played it previously, and uh, it was really impressive. That's that's why I kind of labeled it as the YouTube video here. Uh, nine days. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Could it could really be any number of days? Uh, and I only played three mat or three matches with the deck because we kind of ran out of time at the end of the day. But it looked really strong and it was a lot of fun to play. And I've been wanting to play it again ever since then. So we're playing it again here. We're going to be taking it over to Mythic, playing five matches, seeing how we do um, with it there. The two M20 cards that we added in that weren't in this deck before were Vivian Arcbo Ranger and Voracious Hydra. And both of those cards were really impressive being uh, mid-game kind of cards, you know, even playing Voracious Hydra for like four mana or so where we had really impactful cards to, to play in the middle of the game, but between like our explore stuff on the early end, Nissa and Ugin on the top end, we were kind of missing the impact stuff in the middle. We had like Ripjaw Raptor and I don't know, it just wasn't really enough, but Vivian and Voracious Hydra both give us removal, which the deck needs more removal. So those are pretty good. Vivian's minus five can also is like another way to go get Meteor Golem too. Because Meteor Golem is a pretty important sideboard card that Karn usually grabs Meteor Golem, but Vivian Arcbo Ranger can go grab it also. Um, but yeah, we have we have the Karn that lets us play our our regular sideboard isn't so great for like best two out of three, but still we get to like kind of play all of these cards game one and and everything. Uh, which is which is really nice, you know. Like we have all these spy glasses for Teferi's and and so on. Uh, Golos is just a, another good mid range card to be able to play. Just a five mana card that that ramps us and can go put any of these specialty lands into play. They can go grab with Karn. Uh, we're not activating Golos it's, uh, unless we have well, like if we have all four Paradise Druids in play, we can activate it. Okay, so yeah, we're probably not activating Golos. Um, but yeah, it's just a, it's just a good. Uh, <clears throat> card just kind of bridge the gap to get to like Ugin and stuff like that. But um, yeah, let's let's give it a try again. This was just a lot of fun to play before. Let's see how it, see how it goes. So we're gonna have Mono Green Tron playing five matches. Hey Amnesiac. <clears throat> but no, we'll, we're playing it in best of three, even though our sideboard's not necessarily the best. Four best of three. Dang, I'm down to 97%. All right, we gotta work our way back up there. Hopefully we do that. I like both the decks that we're playing today. What's up, Tag Force? And Original Q. Storm. Space 313. Everybody joining in. Hope y'all are having a good weekend so far. We need Green Kitty. Advanced stuff. If this is a scape shift deck, we may not be so great against scape shift, like against a bunch of zombies. We don't like blast zone. <clears throat> we can't really get blast zone to be zero. I 
Hey, awesome, B-Slush. You tried the ores off sacrifice, and it's so much fun, and you haven't lost to Flash yet. Very nice. <laughs> Whoops. Hmm. So are we going to... We're going to Karn. I don't know if there's really anything to Karn right now. It's probably like going and getting Meteor Golem and God Pharaoh statue and stuff like that. We'll we'll wait. Let's get let's get a couple branch walkers out here. We're just playing two one tribal. Yeah, Helm's definitely a good one to have. So we're hoping to play Nissa next turn, and then the following turn just have enough mana to be able to go like Ugin and Karn and Helm. Because let's see, we'll have. Together, we will prevail. So we'll have eight, ten. Twelve, fourteen. So we'd have fourteen mana next turn, and so this would cost six. But then this would cost two, so that'd be eight. And then, yeah, then the, or not not Helm of the Host, but uh, then Statue. I was thinking Godfrey Statue. Then Godfrey Statue would only cost four more. So yeah, we we will have enough to do everything. I know my responsibility. Next turn, even if they bounce the forest. Yeah, that is kind of assuming my opponent's not dead. That's true. I've got it. They may counter Ugin, though. I'm going to cast Ugin pre-combat because I want to use... I need to use the mana after activating Nissa and stuff. So, like, if I'm going to tap the thing anyway, I'm just going to cast the Ugin. Oh. I guess, I guess they couldn't. They maybe had a counter spell, but they didn't have what was on the battlefield checked. All right, so they are flash tribal. So it looks like with Teferi leyline. So Carnage Tyrant probably pretty good against a whole bunch of flashy stuff. Could be counter spell heavy for Vale of Summer, but then again, if they have. To fairy and play, then Veil of Summer isn't doing anything. A deck with four Golos, four Green Cavalier. That does sound like a pretty sweet deck. Five color green. Yeah, our decks. Yeah, our deck. We don't really need. Yeah, don't really need Green Memorial or Skylands. No, you just just one on tap stuff. Um, basically, I'm just debating whether or not to play all these Veil of Summers. I guess not. Is Wild Growth Walker our worst card? It feels like it. Well, let's let's get some of these in. Let's try it. I don't know. These Veil of Summers may just be dead cards. Without knowing more of their deck. Wild Growth Walker, I think, being one of our worst cards because it's if they're like playing like Teferi to bounce and everything, it's it's a really bad creature to get bounced. Bad creature to get exiled. It's probably not really worth it here. Hmm. I'm gonna mulligan. I don't really like having that high of a curve. Five color green. That does sound like a pretty sweet deck.
whole bunch of goluses and they're like a nexus deck who knows Yeah, you're right, it'd probably be that. Just five color Simic. Get Risen Reef in there. Crisis. I'm gonna keep it because I think they probably have another crisis, basically. Voracious Hydra here would only be a two three as far as fighting crisis. Uh, playing Karn and minusing means that the cra the crisis kills the Karn, so we're just going with the Jade Light. But I can certainly see them having another crisis. Nailed it. So we have another Hydra for, for this one. Our Hydras are beating up their Hydras. Hydra on Hydra Crime. Ow. Yeah, those, those tokens are definitely a problem. Definitely a problem. It's not that big of a problem. We get to just block him. We want to sit. We want to sit back and try to protect Nissa. But the more finales and everything they have, the worse for us. Oh, this is a mass manipulation deck. I'm glad I have some Vela Summers in here. I don't have any in my hand currently. I wish I did. So this is like a Bant Ram tech that just isn't playing any mana creatures. That's weird. Or they've just gone two games without drawing a mana creature, which is the more likely scenario. Yeah, Tron refers to the modern deck Sorry, I'm not explaining that well. I'm sorry. 14, 16. 
7, 11, 16. Um, yeah, there you go. Thanks. Thanks, Necrolepsy. We don't activate Golos. Golos is just a 3-5 a that ramps you, that goes and searches for any land you want and put it, puts it into play. Which is still a, a very valuable card to have in a in a bunch of different scenarios to be able to use with Karn. Ugh. All right, so we need we need more Veil of Summers. I mean, I only I brought in three out of four, but I guess we're gonna need all four. Steel Steel stuff is certainly rough for us. Veil of Summer helps. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Hey, Kitty. That's pretty rough, though. I guess it's not so bad. There are greater battles to fight. My purpose is greater than myself. So I have to do the Silent Gravestone to shut off this Cavalier of Thorns. Obviously, if my opponent ha just draws another Mass Manipulation, we die. Another Agent of Treachery, we're probably dead too. Another basically anything, we're probably dead. I am hoping to draw a land here. I'm hoping we. I'm hoping Karn doesn't sur or, I'm hoping Karn doesn't die and we get to draw a land. Those are my best two possible things that could happen. Hey, you're welcome, Michael. Glad you're joining the YouTube videos. If we draw if we draw the land, we're gonna grab Helm of the Host and have Helm of the Host equipped to the Meteor Golem so we can start getting Meteor Golems every single turn. Um, of course that Meteor Golem will destroy the Nissa as well. If we don't draw the land, and if we have Karn, we're probably just gonna to have to go grab our second Meteor Golem because we just have to kill this Nissa. Just don't attack. Just pass the turn. Okay. So we'll trade. Trade one Hydra. And trading Hydra for Cavalier is a good trade for us. I'm glad they make that attack and not like everything. Interesting. So Ugin can just kill the Nissa, so I don't have to. My grief is my mission. Uh, 
so I don't have to just grab the meteor golem. I mean, obviously, if they have a counter spell, that's really rough. Hmm. Well, I guess they had that. So they're going to ultimate Nissa. Knight of Grace is not a bad one to see for us. We can beat Knight of Grace. Harness the elements. Nah, make another 3 3. So that's three, six. Ugh, that's way too much damage. All right, so that's eight, that's 10, and then 16. And I can only block two less. So I can, I can make it 14, but obviously we're at 13, so that's still enough. lethal. Okay. We're in our fourth Veil of Summer, just cutting a Branch Walker. It's not as impactful. This can be kind of tough. Like, they just have some just cards that just automatically win the game, like Mass Manipulation. Hmm. Still just another like really high curve. It takes a lot to mulligan like the, the two land uh, land war elf hand, but yeah, I just need to draw one land. Really we need to draw more than that, but either any of our lands or branch walkers or jade lights or land war elf or paradise druid, basically everything was a good draw. With the only things being more Planeswalkers and Voracious Hydras. And the one Carnage Tyrant being like bad draws. Okay, well we didn't get there. So I think Vivian's more important than Karn here, because like Karn, you know, could grab something, but it's not really that. There's nothing really that important to grab right now. So I like I like Vivian more, so I just went with the went with the Karn first into a likely counter spell. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. So they got their combo out, Reclamation and Leyline. I'd get out of the way if I were you. Right on, Scott. 
schedule. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. That's hard. I would like that card, but I need to land more. You can already play everything instant speed, so I don't know if that Teferi is really doing that much. Well, that was pretty nice for us. They didn't they had nothing to play with their six mana. Yes, it can, yeah. Un Unmordio can name lands. So yeah, you can It's a very good oh, answer to the Field of the Dead deck. The Scapeshift decks. Um Unmordigo takes those out. Alright, just two cards. Hmm. As far as creatures we could go grab, we could go grab Golos, which puts a land into play with Vivian. Obviously, we have the Nissa, though, to cast two. We'll, we'll just try the Nissa. My, my, how you've grown. All right, Rennie, draw land so we can oogin away this Dawnbringer. I've got time. And Speed Dawnbringer is very nice. Huh. Didn't attack Vivian, huh? Oh, they drew mass manipulation. It's really unfortunate. So if I, if, you know, obviously our stuff's going to be stolen here. Um, if, if they didn't have that and we would have drawn a land, I was going to be going with Carnage Tyrant instead of Ugin. Yeah, it's just... Mass Manipulation is just that kind of card. It's just so ridiculously powerful. Just wins games on the spot. <laughs> A game we have, like, pretty easily in hand, but... Oh, well. Mass Manipulation. Yeah, and then we draw our Veil afterwards. Ugh. Certainly, as y'all know, a card that I wish was never printed. But, oh well. What are you gonna do?
or on the draw. This could certainly be too slow on the draw. We do have a 3-4-5. We got good mana. Hmm. We're doing a really good job of drawing our six drops immediately. Last game, you know, kept the two lands and we draw. We had we had four or six drops in our deck and we drew two six drops immediately with Ugin and, and Carnage Tyrant. Same kind of thing here. We have four six drops in the deck, draw one immediately. But who knows, maybe that Ugin will save us. That was Blast Zone. I was going to get really excited. Blast Zone would be a great card to draw. Blast Zone would be so great. Darn. Would really, really like a two or a three-two branch walker. Hopefully, we hit a spell on top here. Really want a three-two. Okay, good. Three-two. So we can either double block one knight. Oh no. Well, we'll at least take up their whole turn activating these things. What can you do, Karn? Meteor Golem. So that block tapped him out, lets the Hydra kill one. Next turn we can Ugin kill another. All right, so this is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have to block. And then I guess we're. We just dead though. Guess we are just dead if we play Ugin. Hey, Rex. Yeah, this one drop's incredible. Yeah. 
but that's all right. I'd, I'd much rather be losing to the one drop here than mass manipulation. This is at least some good, some good magic. Witness the ties that bind us all. The land fights for us. Usually with vampires, you don't really want to flood out like this, but it actually worked out being pretty nice for their Knight of the Ebon Legion hand. The only sideboarding I could see maybe doing is trimming on Ugin for Vela Summer. Sometimes against aggro decks, I just take Karn out completely, but I think that Karn is still going to be a pretty good card for this matchup. Because like there's there's going to be definitely some times where we're going to want to be grabbing Spy Glasses, uh, whether it's Soren most of the time, but then also that that Ancestry or the the Adanto the first fort. Some different things there. I don't want to show them Blast Zone for as long as I can. Hey, MTG player. Cool, GG's. So they go with Noxious Grasp over, over there. They're just holding up night activation. I've survived an apocalypse. I will survive you. <laughs> Stomping time. So if I attack with Hydra, we'll just trade with Knight? Right now? Or no, we wouldn't even trade, right? Because it's a 4-5. Yeah, so no, we wouldn't even trade. this grudge. I am ancient, and my, my plans do not include you. So yeah, if they just have removal for Wild Growth Walker, they get to kill Ugin also. Certainly hoping not. Yourself useful. I shall withdraw. Will... 
Always return. I will fight you. I am not fighting by you. Soren, Vengeful Bloodlord. Oh my gosh, is that the wrong one? That's Imperious Bloodlord? Oh, I just saw the Bloodlord over there. I just named the wrong one. Oh no. Uh... Oops. Yeah, I just looked at it. Yeah, I was like, Soren, Bloodlord. Okay, Soren, Bloodlord. It's the wrong one. <laughs> uh. House Markov grows stronger. Yeah, it's not great, Kitty. It's not great. One, two, three. True goodness will never be corrupted. Childish games bore me. Yeah. <laughs> Soren's definitely a bloodlord. We got that covered. Good job, Ivad. Good job. All right, so we got Blast Zone to kill these two Sanctum Seekers. Vivian is just a really strong planeswalker. She's removal, makes her creatures really big. The minus five can also go get Meteor Golem. Can my opponent draw some lands? Not the, the four lands and millions of spells. I'd appreciate it. Well, 
Well, I threw this game away with that spyglass play. Nope, they're just not going to draw lands. They're just going to have exactly four and just all gas. Better not do that. Untap. What a frustrating game. I just threw that away. We'll try to pick this up and, you know, reset. So I think our opponent's playing mono blue, and for some reason they played their flash creature. I guess they didn't think it was going to die or something. They just played it at sorcery speed, and they probably had curious obsession there. That's, that's what I'm kind of thinking here. I don't think that any of these cards are necessarily that important against Mono Blue. I'm going to just cut the Karn the Great Creators. Let's get a Carnage Tyrant in here also because that's not counterable. And I'll just play a couple Ugins. I don't think this deck needs Ceratops. Um, that's definitely a mulligan. Because I do think that all the, the artifacts are, are really worth it with Karn and everything, and I, I don't think that... Um, Ceratops necessarily is. All right, we got the Blast Zone. Definitely a very good card to have. We have we have Blast Zone. We're there. We're not, we don't want to play Land War Elf because we have Blast Zone. This is going to destroy all the one drops. So why would we, why would we play our one drop? We're going to play Paradise Druid this turn, and the next turn we're going to blow up one drops.
I guess we let them draw a card if they want with Sailor. Cooler tapped out. We get to resolve Wild Growth Walker. That's good. Always on mono green Tron. This is the second time I've played it since M20 has come out. So I wouldn't say I'm always on it. We played it on Tuesday and it was awesome. We went 3 0. Today we got a little unlucky against a, a mass manipulation deck. I mean, mass manipulation is just the kind of card that's just going to that's gonna beat you. So we lost to that and then I threw away a game against vampires. For us to lose our other match. Anyway, I have to die. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for that sub there. I really appreciate that. So thank you so much for the support. But no, I'm not. I'm not always on any deck. Uh, that's not what I do with the channel here. I play different decks all the time. And never play decks, basically never play decks two days in a row. And if I play a deck, it's usually like another couple of days before I play it again if, you know, if I am going to play it again. Yeah, we're playing over in ranked, when we're playing in ranked, we're, we're going to be playing five matches with the deck. Uh, that's what I'm doing here. So yeah, we lost twice, but we're still playing with it because we I'm playing five matches with it. Whenever we're doing the the little the leagues, then we're eliminated whenever we lose two. No, not anymore. Yeah, we have our our thing for mass manipulation, of course, is the four. Like, that's why I'm playing four of the uh, Vela Summer in the sideboard and not, like, shifting Ceratops. Because I think that's a card that we need against. Um, that we need against, ban against mass manipulation. But obviously, they, you know, they have no cards in hand. They draw mass manipulation, and then I draw Vela Summer the next turn. So it's. You have to draw it in the right order, of course, but. Sometimes that doesn't work. This may be a little tough for us. Depending on the start they have here. That is certainly a good sign for us. No rip jaw or anything here. Not a good sign, never mind. Hey, Liam's. You're welcome. Thank you so much for the sub. I really appreciate the resub there. Second month now.
It's not a very good play against Lightning Strike there, but I don't know about playing Karn or playing Vivian. So just went ahead and went with it. Yeah, I guess that's that's what they got is just removal. Obviously, I could put counters on a forest and then play Wild Growth Walker. The land shall conquer you. Definitely think they have another Lightning Strike. Alright, same thing. And I just don't want a forest to die. So we potentially have 10 mana next turn. Makes sense that they were holding another Marauder. Because of the Blast Zone. Makes sense. Cease this aggression. Damien, you're missing that Golos is a good card even when you don't activate Golos. You're you're too focused on why are we playing Golos because we're not going to activate it. Then realizing that there's times that you just want to have Karn with 4 mana, go grab for 5 mana, a 3-5 that also searches your library for a land and put it into play. So it's just a, it's a good blocker for Planeswalkers and it also ramps you. It's a it's a good card to have in the, in that spot of a curve to get it's a good creature. Might as well not let their creatures cost two less mana than just activate this right now. to die you can still activate mobilize district and make it into a 3-3 three, three, and then it'll just have three one counters on it so it'll just be a 6-6 six, six. so i'll have six mana to go with the karn all right seven with mobilize district I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. I am Karn. I'd get out of the way if I were you. My allies are counting on me. My elemental friend. Uh, 
That's unfortunate. That was the wrong lane to tap. It only cost one mana. Was, I wanted it to tap the mobilized district so then the forest could cast the wild growth walker. Obviously, it shouldn't really matter. The opponent being at three and everything, but that was not really the correct land to tap there with the auto tap. I thought it was going to tap the district too, but it was just highlighting the district because I was using its ability. <laughs> yeah, Star of Extinction would have got me really good. Yeah, it's just a the cat is just a feature on Arena, a uh, little thing that you can um, that you that you get for purchasing the Master Pass, the Mastery Pass. You can, you know, you can select whether or not you want your cat to be showing up. Ugh. Are you satisfied with how many Karn dedicated sideboard cards you have right now in this deck? Yes. Yeah, I am. Side. I am satisfied with. with uh, the all the various options that we have for Karn. You know, of course, we, we don't have as many options for other decks, but honestly, green doesn't have a whole lot of great options for other decks. If, like, two, two green cards that would be nice to have in the sideboard that we don't have because of the artifact package are, like, Kral Harpooner for Mono Blue, but we have the Blast Zones and Reclamation Sage. For Nexus. No, green ley line would not be good in this deck. You need more mana creatures uh, for to make green ley line worth it than just eight. You need to be more in the twelve to sixteen range. I used to play a plain white celebration in this deck, but honestly, it's just kind of too slow. Um, you need, yeah, basically, you want um, like you need like the the mid range stuff. Like it's, it's just kind of too slow and too much mana. But I used to play it before M twenty. I played one plain white celebration in this deck. So blocking with Branch Walker saves us six life. It's a lot of life. That breeding pool is kind of weird over there. Yeah, Voracious Hydra is awesome. Uh, we're currently playing ranked. You can tell my like down here has like the the rank symbols. And also, I put an R next to the decks whenever we whenever we're gonna play them in ranked.
It's really hard to take another three damage whenever they have this Rekindling Phoenix. Rekindling Phoenix is is definitely a downfall of my deck. Uh, before we used to play, I used to play a lot of Force Landings, uh, Rekindling Phoenix and Arclight Phoenix. Those are those are two cards that that this deck really struggles with. But you just don't really see Rekindling Phoenix very much at all. So you know, just trying to dodge that card. But that's a that's definitely a card that I really struggle with. Take this, we're at 11, and then it's three turns with Phoenix. This is unfortunate. Yeah, I think my, my best chance here is to try to be able to fight the Rekindling Phoenix, kill the Phoenix, and then have the token die to the Marauding Raptor. So I don't. So that's why I went by blocking the other thing instead of blocking the Marauding Raptor. Um, but for now, I'm going to just try to set up a wall. So maybe they don't attack with the Marauding Raptor. Can I play Nissa for a turn? Yeah, kitty, that's what I'm asking. I mean, if they have like lightning strike or anything like that, I'm dead. It's kind of if they have anything else, I'm dead. Might as well play our our best if they have nothing else. We will not fail. Elements. Yeah, so yeah, I could if I played if I played Vor Voracious Raptor there though, it's a 3-4. So 3-4 fight Phoenix kills my 3-4 also. And then at that at that point um At that point, you know, they get to attack in still easily. This allows me to kill the Phoenix and still keep a Hydra around. But of course, I'm dead to Lightning Strike, but like I said, I'm going to be dead to Lightning Strike. That's just kind of how life is. So I have nine mana. I want to make this thing so seven. We can make it a nine. No, seven's good enough. No, let's make this a nine. I'm not expecting them to have haste. The Obviously, they could with the shifting ceratops. though.
Oh, that's not even lethal. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, Marauding Raptor get, gets bigger. Yeah. I thought so. Okay. All right, Karn, what are you doing? What are you doing, Karn? Can I, do I just take you out? You're going to grab Graft Digger's Cage or Silent Gravestone. Both of those stop Rekindling Phoenix. I guess we have those against Rekindling Phoenix. That's true. Those things are good. Yeah, you're fine, Karn. <laughs> yeah, obviously hindsight going to seven, having a land as blocker is, is certainly uh, that's safer. But with us being dead to lightning strike and we us seeing a whole bunch of lightning strikes the first game, I want to try to win. I want to try to win that game as fast as possible. And obviously they'd have to just top deck whatever haste creature. Um. So I'm I'm going I was going with the nine because you know the next turn we were gonna have a whole lot of blockers and everything and you know it was just one turn of them drawing a haste creature that I didn't think was very likely you know like how many haste creatures do they actually have in their deck and they have to draw at that turn that can't be that likely so we're about to have you know like the two lands on defense plus our other two creatures so I wanted to try to end the game as fast as possible and the best way to do that was making a nine ten. But just kind of re revisionist history just to go the other way. I, I don't regret my play there at all. Anyway, Deacon, thank you so much for the cheers. Thanks, Deacon. Power to the Meower. <laughs> hey, Angry Ben. All right, so we're trying to get to 10 permanents. Turn on this Arch of Araska. Get that city's blessing. I wouldn't mind drawing an Ugin, though. Drawing Ugin would be kind of cool. Nope. Um, guess we just go these two. Yeah, we probably do not need to Field of Ruin. Some more lands. No, Damien, that's the one that leads to a draw with Marauding Raptor. That's Polyraptor. Polyraptor and Marauding Raptor combo just to make the game a draw. Not Regisaur Alpha. Tools off of push knobs. Let's just fight. Wild beasts will bring your come up. Oh, looks like you're all mouth. And no hands.
was not ideal having our first five cards be lands. But, you know, what are you going to do? Really hope no reaching to Link Phoenix. Jeez. Well, I really hope we draw a Planeswalker. Or just another land. You know, any either one. Absolute worst possibles. I need to say I hope we don't draw and then whatever. Yeah, I, I hope we don't draw a Karn or an Ugin or a Nissa or a Vivian. Huh. I guess we're gonna have to try that more often. So we're taking one from the hatchling. I'm going to be killing the phoenix here. And then I'm going to be using Karn to go grab uh, one of our artifacts to stop phoenix from coming back. No, Svet. Yeah, no, it's a the Grixis Ego deck's a brand new deck. It's a it's a janky one for sure. All we're trying to do is cast on more on more ego a whole bunch and see what happens. I really don't want to block this raptor hatchling. We're just like always dead to lightning strike.
So we're going to four. They obviously have the Hellkite activation. Everything too. Well, that could save us. Obviously, if they just have the burn spell now, we're going to die. But that could save us later. So we're definitely hoping we draw an explore creature. Any explore creature will do. do not pity me. Any explore creature will do. Wait, I, I definitely hope we do not draw an explore creature. Certainly hope no explore creature. Darn. Come on. <laughs> uh, well, I'll just go ahead and play this thing. Man, it feels like it's just 60 lands. I think we're only playing like 24. Yeah, we're only playing 24. And we, <laughs> you know, like we've used all these lands. I guess you can't really count the field of room because that grabbed another land, but still we kept a two lander. And so we've drawn one, two, three, four, uh, plus four, plus five. So we've drawn nine lands. Nine lands, one Wild Growth Walker, and one Karn have been our draw steps. Those have been our 11 draws, including the, the Jade Light taking, getting two lands, of course. The Jade Light grabbed two. That Ugin was just one more card deep. Or that was just one card before. I got five mana. I guess I could have popped the Gravestone, but no, I would have been dead to the... Or no, no, because this would have exiled the Phoenix. I guess I could have... Oh, man, I should have done the Phoenix. I should have done this. Should have done the Gravestone. But then... I mean, if I... So let's see. If I would have done... If I would have done Gravestone... Let's see. We would have had two extra mana... So I would have been able to keep one Paradise Druid back. So we still would have been able to block, block. So yeah. Oh, I forgot about Gravestone drawing the card. Oh, if I would have just popped the Gravestone, we could have could have stayed alive. We have not been getting lucky today so far. We would have, all, yeah, we would have been dead to a, a haste creature or a burn spell like we were already. But. Awesome, Radical Guru. Glad you're really enjoying the Orzhov Sacrifice deck. You're the second person to say that now. Yeah, that deck was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, that's why I labeled that um, on the YouTube channel as my favorite deck this week because yeah, that was a lot of. A lot of uh, fun to play there. All right, see what we do here. Mm. 
Joy, what, what, uh, what deck are you having me play today? So I can tell you had to make the thumbnail and everything. Do they have turn three Nissa? Hey Z. Worse. It's not a bad card, but I'd kind of rather just have land. Well, the forest was going to be the bounce there. I guess they want to get three damage in on Nissa. How rude! I played I played one Mystic Forge deck. It was called Karn Control. Uh, back from like one of the one of the first days of M twenty being out. It was almost all colorless. I don't want them to be able to steal a lot of things with mass manipulation, so gotta try to kill as many mana creatures as we can. Alright, cool. Get all these Veil Summers in. Got all the Wild Growth Walkers. And then, do we want Carnage Tyrant in? I'm gonna say no this time. Last time I brought in Carnage Tyrant. I kinda feel no. I, I took out a Branch Walker. Then we got stuck on mana pretty bad. Yeah, let's... Let's keep it like this. Yeah, and this is awesome. Hey, good job. Way to go. 
Got your first seven win draft in M20 with Mardu Sacrifice. Good job, Wise. Bleh. This hand could certainly lose. from dreams is so good that's a great card That's why we have Golas in our deck. So we can have a play next turn. That's worthwhile. Trust me. You'll thank me later. No, I'm really never gonna thank you. Don't worry, I got this. Your efforts are futile. Say hello to my little friends. <laughs> yeah, Grixis Ego has four Unmoored Ego main deck. It's probably not gonna work very well, but it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty funny. I have the Just Guy drawn from Dreams deck made. I'm playing Might it tomorrow. Be a bad idea. I have it made, but um Ended up cutting it for the the donation deck for later. But yeah, I'll, I'll be playing that deck tomorrow. Through this land, we are all connected. Be wary of the ground you walk on. I will be better prepared next time. GG. nothing well yeah they couldn't cast veto but yeah they could cast negate Yeah, we're going to play Grixis Ego today. Playing that up next. After we, ho after we hopefully win game three here. Don't really like our chances. But hopefully we get game three. Uh, neither. 
TTIF. Alright, Veil of Summer is good. We'll be able to have Branch Walker on two. Maybe Voracious Hydra can kill something on three, but, pro but likely not. It's unfortunate. I wouldn't mind top decking that card later on, but we don't really don't want to draw the six drop here. Speaking of six drops. Good one to have. Well, let's go for land. It's going like, do they just have like Frilled Mystic? Hey, Captain Narset. Good evening. Are you kidding me? Uh. You will not threaten this world. And why not I just cast the land war all first? I think there's a I think there's a, a decent chance that they have like a negate type card if I try to go go grab st statue here. Looks worst case scenario obviously is Nissa plus counterspell backup. We haven't had things go right for us in this league at all. The land shall conquer you. I will endure. Things have not gone right this for us at all. This is a fight you can win. Like what? What? Why? Do not defy the designs of a true bathe in ghost fire. Well, certainly hope crossing our fingers for no more Nissas.
It's like, did, did they have like a sweeper again that they wanted to like kill a bunch of creatures and they didn't want that thing to be a creature? I'll protect you. Ether itself serves me. So, did have Frill Mystic earlier. Shocked in there. How it looks like Frill Mystic. Here goes nothing. I didn't consider Prison Realm. Now I wish I would have played the Voracious Hydra last turn. I guess we got Blast Zone though. So we're going to put two counters on a Blast Zone. Okay, so they have two spells in hand. a bad idea. All right, that's good that we don't we know they don't have like a counter spell here. Okay, so if I go tap, tap, one, two, three, yeah, this is the way to do this. Seek shelter in my stewardship. We will meet again. So six is still four. So two, four. Yeah, I'm gonna have to just have this thing. So that's seven mana. And I guess I could minus the Ugin. Really want to take up the Ugin, but I guess if they have, I guess if they do end up having mass manipulation, this is my best play. Or destroy. Let's 
play is not like great against non-manipulation, but it's, it's my best play against manipulation. Because putting them to one means that we have all these lethal attackers, the mobilized district being a lethal attacker also. Hey, Dr. Grindle. No, I have, we, uh, somebody donated for the fourth slot for today already for a donation deck. I don't know what it is though, so I just have it written as donation deck because I haven't been told what it is yet. But that slot's taken up though. Nature's true power. All right, so we're going to finish two and three here. This experience still proved useful. All right, not so bad with the two and three. Didn't have the very, didn't have very much luck throughout a lot of that league. And I made the one very bad play against vampires naming the wrong Soren with Spyglass that cost us that one. There's two Soren Bloodlords. One's Imperious, one's Vengeful. Don't don't name Vengeful when they have Imperius. I just I just quickly glanced at their uh, Soren and saw they had Soren Imperius. You know, just said Soren Bloodlord is more like the yeah, Soren some long word Bloodlord. And so I just looked at like the drop down menu. Soren long word Bloodlord. All right, choose that one. Oh, wrong one. So that's what cost us one of those one of those matches. But. <laughs> And then against the the green red dino deck, we were so close to stabilizing both times, needing them to not have you know something that killed us, let us untap both times and lost both of them. But still a pretty sweet little deck here. I like this deck quite a bit. I like how consistent it is. Um, you know, you don't really get uh, you know like you just you get to like you know normally hit your land drops a lot of times and you know, it's just one color so you don't have to worry about like having two of your colors and not your third and anything like that and the the Karn package is honestly pretty good it's it's, it's definitely pretty good right now um, we're going to be struggling with flyers that keep coming back like rekindling phoenix and arclight phoenix of course but arclight phoenix is not the most played deck right now and obviously we're going to struggle against mass manipulation that's a card that just is not very fair. But we have we have our Vela Summers here, so at least we have something against it. We just hope that, to have the Vela Summers for mass manipulation. But besides that, I like I like what our deck's doing. It's a it's a good deck. All right, so that's a uh, Mono Green Tron. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. And if so, please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd appreciate that. But that's it here for. Monogreen Tron, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.